So how many of you are actually familiar with SaltStack? Know what it is? Have maybe used it, kind of? Okay. So for the rest of you, if I say like Chef, Ansible, Puppet, something like this, you know what I'm talking about. So it's basically the same thing, slightly different system. Um, a little bit about myself. Originally, I'm from California, Santa Barbara. Um, I live in Dusseldorf, Germany now. There are a few places there in between. Um, I've been some form of system administrator or DevOps for about 18 years or so now. Um, my educational background is actually in photography, kind of fun fact. So for those of you that are out there pumping my name into Google right now, that maybe explains some things for you. Uh, <laughs> Um, I've been working at Trivago for almost two years um, and with Open Nebula for about a year and a half now. Um, a little bit about Trivago. So we operate five data centers. We have two in the US, one on each coast, um, one in Asia, or technically two in Asia, I guess, but one is yeah, minuscule. And then our main data center, which is in Dusseldorf. Um, we have about 1,500 salt minions. So basically what this means is there are about 1,500 machines or VMs that we use to do the configuration management with salt on. Uh, in terms of sort of the size and scope of our application, we have about 1.8 million hotels um, in about 190 countries. This is obviously growing all the time. Um, and for our Open Nebula installation, we have about 30 hypervisors, five of which are just a development cluster, <coughs> and then the rest are spread between either Dusseldorf, the US, or China. Um, some of the reasons that we really like Open Nebula, um, firstly, the open source factor is really big for us. We love using and supporting open source software. Um, the operational simplicity, so we don't really have to put in a bunch of time and maintenance into making this thing run and keeping it running. I don't know if anybody out here has ever dealt with an OpenStack deployment, but yeah, so it's, yeah, there, there, there's, 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 there's a gap there, right? <laughs> um, um, the feature set, like it pretty much offers everything that we need out of the box. We had to do a little bit of tooling here and there on our own. Um, and I'll show you some of that here later in the presentation. Um, but I think one of the big things for us and the reason that we were initially <coughs> looking into some kind of virtual platform is since traditionally all of our infrastructure is bare metal, when a team or a project wanted to do something or test something, there was this lag time. So they had to come to my team basically and do a hardware acquisition. And then, you know, a couple of months later on, you know, optimistically, they had some hardware and then they were able to actually start just testing or going forward with their idea. So for us now with Open Nebula, we can just be like, yes, you know, go ahead, here's an account, do your thing, have fun, let us know how it goes and we can take it from there sort of thing. Um, and the other really nice thing is it basically integrates really seamlessly into our current infrastructure. So tying this into all of our current data centers, connecting it with the different VLANs, um, basically making it a piece of our existing infrastructure was also a really easy phase for us. Um, so the taste tests. So this is, I guess, one of our first sort of big and what I would uh, say interesting projects that we had with Open Nebula is, like I said, we have about 1,500 salt minions um, and we have about 300 we'll call them tech people in our company. I would say about 100 <coughs> of those are regular committers to our salt stack repository. Um, so you can imagine when you have this many people pushing these many changes to one repository, the odds of something breaking or something going wrong, they start to increase the more and more people you kind of have with their hands in that cookie jar. Um, and when we want to roll out a new configuration or update a current one, if a change that somebody has made that we haven't really foreseen affecting one of our roles or one of our states then impacts that and breaks it, it's really kind of a nightmare to go back <coughs> through all of these commits and to figure out exactly where that breaking change happened, what it was, which state it was, because we sort of have hierarchies of states, states that are interdependent. Um, and so we were sort of looking for a way to ease that burden and to make the repository itself more accessible to people to just kind of push their stuff into. Um, 
This is basically what we were looking at when we decided to start doing this. So there were a couple of things that were missing for us. Um, we use FreeBSD a lot. I'd say the vast majority of our machines are actually FreeBSD. We have then some Debian in there and a tiny little bit of CentOS and Ubuntu here and there for some various things. Um, but we needed uh, contextualization for FreeBSD. So we needed a way to get these things to work how we wanted them to with Nebula. Um, and then we also had to create a contextualization for salt stack. So something that understood how to basically configure a salt stack minion to apply the correct roles to get the right software on there. Um, the other thing was we had a very specific bare metal installation process. Um, my colleague actually in the back there, Esteban, is the guy that built and maintains it. Um, and we needed to basically create a one-to-one -one map of this for ourselves so that we knew that this VM image pretty much was a one-to-one -to, -one to a bare metal installation for us so that our tests actually had some meaning to them. Um, we needed a CLI wrapper for the API basically because we didn't want to have to program all of the API calls into each program that we wrote so this wasn't really necessary but in terms of future development and opening this up for other people inside of the company it made it a lot simpler in the long term. And then we needed another one that basically wrapped around that um, that we would use to run the salt states um, test with taste um, that understood how to take our states, apply them through the contextualization to a VM and give us something that we could then launch and execute these on for the deployment. And then the last was some kind of automated test pipeline. So every time we had code come into this repository, we needed to run the test to make sure that everything passed. Um, basically what we did for creating our VM images is we went with Packer. Um, I looked at a couple of things at the time. I don't know if Javier is around here somewhere. He's also got a really interesting one, Congalo, which he developed, but unfortunately didn't really work with FreeBSD for us. Um, Packer we've been really happy with. We basically built a simple wrapper around that so that we could deploy, basically we have like, uh, like I said, so a FreeBSD, a Debian, uh, and a Ubuntu image in our um, Nebula library at the moment. So we have like a sort of base installation that matches our bare metal installation. Um, and then I wanted people to be able to build <coughs> custom images on top of that. So that's basically what this little flavor option is here. So the first thing is the template that you want to build and the flavor is sort of whatever you want to add on top of that if somebody else wants to build their own images. Um, and this basically just executes Packer, builds the images, and then pushes them to Nebula over the API. Uh, that is really difficult to read. But basically what this is, is this is, we called it Spawn. <laughs> This is the CLI for interacting with the Open Nebula API. Um, and it just does some really basic things like it can instantiate and destroy VMs, list templates to figure out which thing it actually wants to spawn based on the template naming um, and a couple other little things like that. Um, the actual taste program, so this is what will then take our salt states and apply them to a VM. So what this is designed to do is you can give it, you know, the URL of your repository. You can even give it a separate branch if it's something that hasn't already been merged to master. Um, you can run with the high state, which is basically salt's way of saying execute all of the applied states to this machine. Or you can tell it, no, I don't want to do that. And then you can go in and manually do it if you need some kind of further investigation or debugging into these things. Um, and that basically looks something like this. So this would be an example of a PHP 7 deployment for us. Um, that top portion there just sort of defines the roles that we have, a PHP server with PHP 7 which data center we're in, um, what environment, we have prod, stage, and dev environments for all of these things, um, the OS that we're going to use, and then the specific settings for the VM that, so for FreeBSD, we actually run several repositories, and depending on which states you're going to need, you need to select a specific repository. 
So this was kind of all the logic that we needed to kind of get this thing running. Um, <coughs> down here at the bottom, you can see an example of if you were to run one of these things manually, sort of what that would look like. So it's just executing paste, pointing it to the test that's in the repository that you want to run, and giving it, like in this case, I'm running a debug, so I get a little more verbose output, and identifying which template I want to use. If you're actually looking at the Open Nebula UI, this is sort of what it would look like for you. So it's just a comma separated a value scheme. Um, a masterless minion for salt is basically one that doesn't need to authenticate with the salt master. So right. you kind of have, you can forego all of this adding a bunch of unnecessary minions to your master. Um, and then same thing like I was saying before, you can select which branch and which repository you actually want it to pull and test. Um, the overall pipeline then looks something like this. So a developer will push their stuff to Bitbucket, which for all intents and purposes, we can also call Git here, it's kind of the same thing. Um, that then triggers a build process with Concourse. Concourse spins up paste and spawn inside of a Docker image. Those things make the call to Open Nebula to instantiate the VM and then pass all of the contextualization variables for us based on the file that I showed you up above here. And then it basically waits for that VM to come up. So it's sending an SSH request like every five seconds until that VM becomes active and is um, completely bootstrapped basically. There were a couple of little tweaks we had to make to the startup process. So what we've done for these tests is Basically, SSH won't become available until all of the contextualization is done running. And then you get something like this. So this is your overview of the whole process. So if you're looking at the concourse interface, this is what you get. And this is sort of our, what we would consider our most important states that we test the most heavily. So you can see anything in green is good, it's fine, it's happy. Something with the little yellow bars around it is something that's currently being tested. A blue one is a pause that's been put in there. And a red one is one that has failed. So this gives us a nice sort of at a glance overview of what it's actually doing for us. Um, when you get the output, you'll end up with something like this. So basically all this is saying is this test succeeded. You can go in and see who made this push request or this merge request. Um, what the actual output of the state was. And so this is all things that spawn is getting back from the VM as it's running. Um, if it were to fail, you would get something like this, um, which basically the same deal. Just now you're going to have some failure output down here in the bottom. Um, this particular one was from a package mismatch. Somebody had used the wrong name for a package and it broke all of the PHP states. So just a minor typo, but Obviously a big deal when you're deploying something into production. Um, and the green bar up there at the top is actually so you can go back through every commit or merge that was made into the Git repo and see them individually. So you have sort of a really nice overview of this whole process. Um, yeah. This was a little bit of extra that I added in here. Um, Mostly because one of our uh, colleagues did a really nice blog article for this too, which I will link you to, but we built um, auto-scaling Jenkins for testing our PHP code. And it looked something like this. So same kind of idea. You get a push from Bitbucket. Jenkins sends a hook to, um, or Bitbucket sends a hook to the Jenkins master, and it spawns the job. We have. Um, I think a minimum of like one of these running, a maximum of 10, so separate slaves. Um, the tricky part of this was getting them to scale down because I think the way Open Nebula works by default, and maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but when it decides to terminate and scale down, it actually kills the newest one rather than the oldest one, which is typically where you have your jobs running. So obviously this wasn't what we wanted as a behavior. Um, so what we did is we used this sort of lovely one flow or lovely one flow one gate stuff that they provide for you and the slaves themselves will actually monitor their jobs and if a slave doesn't have a job running for 10 minutes, it will just kill itself. Um, if 
the CPU exceeds for the entire group 2.9, then it says, okay, I need another slave, and it just boots that up, and you get stuff deployed there automatically for yourself. Uh, a couple of links. Um, the contextualization for FreeBSD, if anybody is interested in that, is available at our public Git repo. Um, there's a tech blog that um, names Mark Siebenischer wrote on integrating the salt state test formulas into um, a Docker image. And the last one here is I think probably the nicest of the bunch. Um, this is sort of a full how-to for anybody that's interested in setting up an <coughs> auto-scaling Jenkins inside of Open Nebula. Uh, and that's it. Do you guys have any questions for me?